Vive l'Empereur This is Chris Muller with the Thursday Night Gamers, Aaron Tobel, Chuck Silverstein, and Kurt Marichli. This week we're playing Bautzen, the second battle in OSG's newest release in the Library of Napoleonic Battles, Napoleon's Resurgence. For those of you who've been following our videos for a while, I wanted to let you know that there's going to be a format change. These videos are very time consuming to make, so I'm looking for a way to compress the editing process while still conveying a feel for the game and our session. In this first attempt, rather than give you every blow-by-blow -blow of the combat phase, I'll present some selections of the more exciting bits, along with an overall commentary of what happened when. Thanks in advance for your patience, and let us know what you think of the new format. Bautzen is a fascinating battle, one I knew very little about. Apparently it's the fourth biggest battle uh, of the Napoleonic period. This was the second major battle in the spring of 1813 that led to an armistice between the coalition and Napoleon. Unlike Lutzen, the coalition is on the defensive this time, drawn up in an extended line and very rough terrain. They've had time to build up a network of improved positions. Napoleon, with superior numbers, is attacking all along the line from the west, but with a very powerful left wing led by Marshal Ney that threatens to drive into the rear of the coalition position. Aaron and I will be reprising our roles from Lutzen. Aaron will command the largely Prussian right wing. I will command the Russian left wing. And as usual, Chuck returns as the Emperor Napoleon. Kurt didn't join us for this session, but may make a cameo appearance later on as Marshal Ney. And now on to May 20th, 1813. <laughs> The French noon turn begins with the uh, French left under Marshal Ney forming into March Column and moving out toward the lakes and marshes in the northern end of the map where they are going to be met by Barclay's Russian Corps. In the south, Oudinot's 12th Corps crosses the river at Doberschutz where they push back units from Milorodovich's uh, Russian 4th Corps and Cossacks from Eugene's Russian 2nd Corps. <laughs> Bautzen, the coalition is faced with a classic river crossing right in their face. The Spree River runs the length of the map from north to south. It's quite permeable with lots of fords and bridges, but it's uh, also surrounded by marshy ground, lakes, and ponds. Uh, the coalition can't hold the entire river line. It's too extended and too broken, but they also don't want to give it up without a fight. It's an interesting problem. Uh, meanwhile, in the interior, the uh, Prussian and Russian soldiers have broken out their spades and are attempting to dig in wherever possible. The fighting south of Bautzen uh, between Udino and Milorodovich intensifies, while Bautzen itself is slowly being outflanked by uh, MacDonald's uh, 11th Corps. In the north, the French columns advance, and some sort of reinforcements are coming in the road from the west. All right, there's two strength points up here. Right. The French, a, apparently, maybe, maybe, maybe Bavarian, firing down at this horse. Firing down at the Cossacks. At the, the Ilyowski's Cossacks. The Cossacks. Yeah, there you go. Had a result, nothing so. for you. Oh, nothing for me. Well, nothing for me. So, uh, I cite that the French So, guys. do the Cossacks like to dance? Or do they protest. care to dance away? At one to one? Yeah. No, we'll stay where. So fall back at DR. DR. That's right, DR. Huh. No. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so let's nothing see. Over here. Here. Nothing. Well, let's see here because. Oh, fire or something. oh absolutely, oh. absolutely. Oh, so. Moving up the river here. Yeah, so he's firing out of the town okay. and the DR. On Colbert? On Colbert, yep. <clears throat> he has to move um. back. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> While Milorodovich and Udino spar in the south, the bridges over the River Spree into Bautzen are destroyed. Uh, in the Russian interior, uh, there's a little jockeying going on. Uh, Aaron is redeploying up in the north, uh, preparing to receive Ney's attack. Mm -hmm. 
All of the checking of rules during the French 2 p.m. turn is because we're trying to figure out all of the crazy terrain around Bautzen. There are fords, bridges, there are ponds, there are streams, um, and Chuck is trying to figure out how to outflank the second corps defenders inside the town. Uh, in the center of the, of the, the board, Bertrand's sixth corps is smashing into Kleist's plucky third corps, which is dug in on the eastern side of the river. All right. So, five to, five to one. We want a five or six, Chuck. Big five or six. A four. four. So, ding, is DR2. The, is just the DR2. DR2, so. All right. So, yeah. Bilbiowski's. He gets to sled up. Bissars. Okay. Get one to these. See here. So, six and nine is 15. 15 eight. and three is 18. So, 18 to 13. Mm hmm. Okay. Strange. strange one strange. to one. Right. And that is a five and a one to one. That's an AR, AR shock. shock. Right. Towns give that, right? Yeah, they do. Towns give that. Okay. Right. I didn't know if that was he had, a, he had a slight okay. change. Okay, and we tie. So we're reduced. Yeah, we're reduced. So. Biggest, I thought he just biggest best. I thought he just snuck a couple okay. down. Is, yeah, is this uh, is this uh, Calvary going to dance away? Um, they, they will. Okay, gotcha. Like to... Two. So twenty-four to eight. That would be twenty-four to eight. Whoa. Three to one. Jeez. Didn't think I'd have that much on you. Come on, DR a lot. That's, oh! that's a shock. Rats. Is it really? It is six. And At I three to one? I, well, I now have a six. Yeah, so you go so You go back. I'm all had to force the river at some point. Okay. So uh, no, I wanted a DR. Two. Multiple DRs. Yeah. I'm sure you did, so. And we'll just send this guy to enjoy the fortified position. <laughs> enjoy your fortified enjoy position. my fortified position. And let's see here. So I think uh, that's pretty much it. Right <laughs> On the final turn of our evening, the coalition is forced to counterattack following French advances. I don't have to attack, but I do attack at one to four odds out of Proschwitz, uh, foolishly as it turns out, and Aaron is forced to attack uh, at one to three odds against the sixth corps units that threw his men out of their improved positions on the Kiefernberg. I got six. 22 to six, that's one a... One to four. One to four, that could get up there. Right? You need a three or a four? Yeah. Three. A uh, six would be delightful. There we go, I knew you could do it. A E. Position. Oh, it is an improved position. So that's one to three. One to three is not too bad. Those are better Russians than one to four. Yeah. Yep. Those are Russian, so I'll roll the yeah. green die. Ooh, oh, but they just got eliminated. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> they god. They just Here got we go. eliminated. Well, Bang. <laughs> so if Aaron and I learned in our first crack at bouts and anything, it's what a delicate thing a delaying action is. It's very easy to get trapped or to roll poorly. Um, and lose precious units. Uh, hopefully we can avoid any more such unpleasantness as we head into the late afternoon of May 20th, 1813. See you next time. Vive l'Empereur!